I wanted to show a video about my NES collection before I eventually make one about the entire game assembly and also about the game room as a whole. The Nintendo Entertainment System makes up the bulk of my overall collection. Since most of what I'm going to be talking about on this channel is various NES games, especially the more obscure B-movie-esque titles, I thought it'd be fun to just go through and show you where I keep grabbing all this stuff from, so there's some reference for how everything fits into the overall library. As of right now, I have every single official game released in North America, which is about 700 titles in total, except for one, which if you know much about collecting NES games, you can probably guess, and that is stadium events. If you don't, quick story is that Bandai Family Fun Fitness Pad came with a game called Stadium Events. The pad was repackaged by Nintendo as the Power Pad, and Stadium Events was changed to World Class Track Meet but not before a few thousand copies went out into circulation. It's the exact same game as World Class Track, just with a different title screen, and different cartridge, and box art, and like a $15,000 price tag. Here you'll see a fake copy that my sweet sister bought for me off Etsy when she found out that this was the only game I was missing. It's a reproduction, obviously. I wouldn't keep it just hanging out like this. But because it's from her, I decided that until I get a really good opportunity to buy a copy or $15,000 materializes out of thin air, I'll probably leave it alone for now. I've got them categorized A through Z, and I use the NES games list on Wikipedia to decide what goes where. So the Disney games, for instance, which I'll talk more about later, are a weird one. Jungle Book isn't filed under the letter J, it's under D for Disney's Jungle Book. Same with The Little Mermaid. I don't know if I'd really do it that way if not for the Wikipedia list, but that's just how it is on there, and since it makes things easier to organize, I stick with it. There's a bunch of examples of stuff like that on here. And of course, the numbers come first. 3D World Runner, Eight Eyes, Ten Yard Fight, 720, and the 1940 series. All the way down to the letter Z with Xanak, Zelda 2, Zen the Intergalactic Ninja, and Zelda's Revenge. The main exception to my alphabetized system are the seven rarest games, which I have on top in these special cases. I mean, there's actually a lot of uncommon games in the NES library that are really rare, but these guys are the biggest deal up here. You'll see that I've got some Bonk's Adventure, Bubble Bobble 2, which I just dropped on the floor like an asshole, Flintstone's Surprise at Dinosaur Peak, Little Samson, Panic Restaurant, Power Blade 2, and Zombie Nation. These games are super expensive, and while I keep them separate to protect them, I honestly do play them from time to time, because other than maybe that Flintstones game, they're actually pretty fun. Plus, they're games. They're there to be played. On this very top shelf, I've got a couple random things. Uh, this is a joke. This is Lee Carvalho's putting challenge from The Simpsons. Might I suggest Feather Touch. This is a fake game that actually is a flask, uh, Castle Vodka, that my buddy Scott gave to me. I haven't actually used it yet. And then this is actually the rarest cartridge I own, which my buddy Mark gave to me, and it's a test cartridge for controllers in this bright-ass yellow-orange cartridge. This thing is really rare, and not particularly sought after. I guess no one's really that hyped about a test cartridge. Also up top is my NES Advantage. I don't know why it's up here, it's just the easiest place to put it, I guess. And this is actually my original Nintendo, which is very yellow, and stained from years of abuse. It still works great, I just switched more to the top loader because of how easy it is to use. I keep it here instead of in the attic because it actually still works, and sometimes I need the original instead of the top loader. Sometimes. Over here, I've got a bunch of random controllers. Uh, this is the Konami Laser Scope, which is compatible with light gun games, and actually works a lot better than the Zapper, in my opinion. This is the one where you speak into it to fire, and it's got a little scope you look through to aim. Also, it's the raddest looking thing I've ever seen. Here's the Power Glove, of course. I don't have the accessories that you put on the TV to make it work, but it doesn't fucking work anyway, so I don't know. It just looks cool, so I'm happy with it. Here's the U-Force, which is the sensory version of a controller that you use. Kind of wave your hands back and forth over it. I've actually never tried it. I hear it works, but who knows. If you've never seen a complete collection before, this may be cool to see all this stuff. If you're a big jaded dork like me, you're probably on game forums all the time where you've seen a bunch of people who have complete or close to complete collections. If you're just a casual NES enthusiast, then you might not know that some of these games that are sitting around are actually really rare and bizarre. Let's see if I can highlight a couple. Here's Kid Clown in Nightmare World. Here's one that looks super generic but is actually really expensive. Dragon Fighter, and some more sought-after stuff like Mighty Final Fight, Kickmaster, This Game Rules, 
DuckTales 2, which is the first rare game I ever got. Uh, here's another generic one, Swordmaster. This copy has seen better days. I don't always go for the best looking cartridges, so you can see my copy of Shadow of the Ninja, which is a great game, is pretty fucked up. The end label of my overlord here is a bit tattered. The worst is my copy of Smash TV, which is this guy over here where you can't even read the label because someone tore it off like an asshole. You may notice I've got a lot of these color circle stickers around, these green and yellow and blue things, and they are to remind me what certain games can do. So these blue ones here on both Battletoads games indicate that they are two-player co-op, which is really great when I have friends over and want to remember what the hell I was looking for. Green games are light gun games. Is Daydreaming Davy a light gun game? That seems like a mistake. Anyway, oh, like Freedom Force. This is a rad zapper game. I didn't do this for the power pad, seen here hiding behind my guitar, although there are a few games for the power pad. Yellow ones are four player games. These are games that use the NES satellite or the NES 4 score, which I have here. And I actually use this all the time for multiplayer. There's not a ton of awesome games for it, but there are some hidden gems like Nightmare on Elm Street, Nintendo World Cup works with four player, and so does Super Spike V-Ball, as well as the amazing Super Spike V-Ball Nintendo World Cup combo cart. Again, unless you're a super dork like me, you probably didn't know that there are four Wheel Fortune games and just as many Jeopardies. It's not much to say about them really, just a weird fact. Down here, these are all bootleg games uh, that my buddy George brought back from Serbia. They're probably all going to fall down when I grab them, but I just thought they were really cool and unique looking and new to me having grown up in the States. I haven't actually been able to get any of them to work, but they look really dope. Over here we have more unlicensed titles. I don't generally collect them, they just show up mostly. Although there are a few I wanted like the Bible games because I thought they were pretty funny. And then I did want Wally Bear and the No Gang, the anti-drug title for the same reason. And then this is the disgusting chiller which uses the light gun to blow up people's body parts. Kinda had to get that one. There's some other decent stuff here like micro machines, but honestly I forget what all these are because only a few of them have labels. Also, whenever I put them in the top loader and the screen starts whiling out, I feel like they're abusing it from the inside somehow. I have a couple of Famicom titles, which is the Japanese NES, but I do not collect these at all because I do not own a Famicom. This one I got in Thailand and I have no idea what it's like. It seems like a pretty serious story. Can you imagine seeing this as a kid? Like why would you want to play this? Uh, let's see, but I picked up a few that I really wanted just for kicks at like a convention one time. Uh, this is Ice Hockey Challenge. Uh, Dragon Quest 3 with the Toriyama art, and Mother, which is the precursor to Earthbound. These are kind of random. These are actually games that were only released in Japan, but were translated and converted to NES cartridges. So these are all the Kunio-kun games, which are the series that includes River City Ransom. Here's the ice hockey game that I mentioned before, uh, but this is, you know, the translated version. Uh, then here's Sweet Home, which is a Capcom RPG that set the tone for Resident Evil. Had to do it. Uh, these are both recently made homebrews. Rainbow Bright, which sucks ass. And Micro Mages, which is honestly one of the best games I've played. If other homebrews are as good as Micro Mages, please let me know ASAP. I really can't say enough about how great this game is. Finally, the thing I'm really most proud of are these games right here. These are all official NES games that are only released in PAL regions, which are Australia and Europe. They work on the top loader only, they won't work on the regular NES. But once I got the top loader and realized that I could import these things, I just went for it. So you've got some very obvious ones here like Aussie Rules Footy, <laughs> uh, International Cricket, Asterix, and Prince Valiant. There's also some weird ones like this official 3-in-1 Super Mario Bros, Tetris, and Nintendo World Cup. That's quite a combo. There's also a lot of really good NES games released only in PAL regions. Hammer and Harry, Konami Hyper Soccer, New Ghostbusters 2, Parasol Stars, which is the sequel to Rainbow Islands, which is the sequel to Bubble Bobble, Parodius, and Euphoria, which is probably the best game I have so far that was only released in PAL regions. There are a couple more I'd like to get, like Mr. Gimmick and Rodland, which are both pretty pricey and hard to come by, so I haven't gotten that far yet. There were also a bunch of Disney games that only made it to Europe that include Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and The Lion King. Sorry, Der Koenig Der Lohen? All these games are terrible. Like, when you hear that Europe got these games, at first you're kind of jealous until you see how passionately low effort they are. 
Here's my top loader, which is what I mostly play NES games on. It's not perfect. The video quality isn't really amazing, but it works every time I want it to play, which if you've struggled with the original model, you know what a boon that is. And that's about it. Without just really going through and showing you every single game I have, I just wanted to give you a brief overview and give you the general gist of it. Show you some stuff I don't see a lot, like the PAL games or some of the bootleg titles, and some of the things that if you're not really familiar with the NES library, you might think are pretty cool. Or not. I don't know. I'll have more later when I do a whole studio tour and talk about some of the other systems and whatnot. But until then, thanks for watching and allowing me to subject you to this shrine of plastic, circuit boards, and misplaced nostalgia. Until next time.